All right, so we're back. Now at least you know what the interruptions are. And we've added our little bit of a, a curl at the top. Why? Who knows? Who knows why? And we've also kind of decided that we'd like to take something and I'd like to make a little teardrop shape going this way. And so I have a little bit of that left. I think I'm gonna blend these. They're pretty much the same except one of them was from a blend I did for something and it has a little bit of white in it. Speaking of which, I have some waste pieces right there. So I'm gonna make all these into a nice bit of something and use that. Because really what I wanna do is just have a nice color. I just totally put air bubbles in it because I was talking and I was trying to put too much through at once. So I'm getting a funny blend with a couple of my air bubbles. But I think it'll be a nice light gray, blue, green kind of color when I get done with it. And it might look good. And I also think that I should have put some black in between here and here. I don't think I can fix that at this point because I think I have it glued on there pretty well. So I should have put a black piece. I was just thinking to myself that I will put some black around this to give it some of a distinct kind of a line so it doesn't blend into the blues in this one. And then I thought I should have done that on the other side, but it's too late now. So this is the color I'm getting. I just need one or two more goes to get rid of that last bit of white. All right. So I'm basically going to make it into a nice curl and try and get rid of any air bubbles I may have put in there. This is the part I don't like. Trying to get it to a shape you can start something with. It's frustrating. I just want to kind of ball it up and get started, but I know there's probably air bubbles in it. Which is totally my fault. Totally my fault. So we're about the right sh uh, length, I should say, not shape. I would like to make it into a tall, teardroppy kind of a shape. So I'm just going to stretch the one side out to a point. Like so. So you can see what I've got. Tall teardroppy shape. It's not perfect by any means. I'm going to wrap it in my white. I know you heard me just say I want to wrap it in black. That comes next. Because while I'm talking, I've just decided in my head that I want to have some white and some black. I'm getting a lot of white and black in this, which I expect to do from the beginning. So now it's gonna look like so my little air bubbles I was expecting. I'm just trying to get rid of some white without mashing it into the blue. Because once I do, I can't really undo it. So that has to go in the waste pile, whereas the other white can go. See, I've got a nice little interesting blue wave in the middle of that. Once I start uh, reducing it, I'll get rid of any of these little air bubbles that I have. I can see him, but he's not going anywhere. And then I want to put some black around it, which means I need to put these back through once or twice. 
trying to decide if I want to put the black just here. Because I could do this. I could lay the black in there. Like that. Or I could put this like so, put the black back around it again, but then I end up, whatever's on this side, when I put it up against something else, it's going to be one big long black stripe, so there's no pattern to that, which means there's not a lot of interest to it. So I think I'm going to trim this. I just want to make sure that's stuck on there. Actually, this is before I do that. I'm going to trim my black. Like so. And then I want to make sure that it's on there well. It's in this little crease. And I may even, I may even wrap that around a little bit. Just to kind of cover that semi-circle part. And you're probably wondering, what the hell is she doing? This is kind of how I work. I try to, I try to plan things out ahead. It never quite comes out the way I expect because somewhere along the way I start doing this kind of stuff because it's just like no nah, that didn't go the way I thought I'm gonna throw this in and then once you do that you're pretty much just winging it at that point there's no point in pretending you have a plan anymore I've totally just gone as I say off the reservation so I want to make sure this is glued down to my roll at the top and then I want to figure out how far down I want it to go so I think I just want it to go down kind of to the first black stripe and then maybe it looks like it's part of the plan so if you can see there's a black stripe here and it goes from there around the little green ball on both sides not that this looks like a little green ball right at the moment, but it is actually a little green ball. Now on this end, I did bring it down onto the blue a little bit. Why, I don't know, but I'm going to leave it. I think it's fine. Now i got to figure out what to do with this, because it's big. So do I want it that big? I originally was thinking I was putting it in here. So that means I'm going to cut this off. And it's going to be... So since I'm putting it up against here, I think what I want to do is indent this. And I don't know if my stick is big enough for that. I don't want to ruin my round shape on the other side, but I do kind of want to put an indent so that that circle fits into this shape. Kind of like so. I want it to look like a puzzle piece. I want it to look like it was meant to be there. And that means I'm probably going to end up making this come to a point up here somewhere, like so. It has to kind of go all the way along. Like so. And 
Now on this side, when I roll things up against it, I'm going to get stripes. On this side, I'm going to get plain old blue, which is kind of boring. We don't like boring. Boring is no good. That's not big enough. What do I have that I can put in there? It's going to stop it from being boring. I have a gold triangle, or I can have a gold triangle. It was a little too small when I rolled it, so I want to make a triangle out of it. Pinching the top, like I said before. Pinch, pinch, pinch. If it comes out almost the same as this guy, then we know that we did it and it's going to fit. Squeezing him in there nice, like so. Cut the end off, like so. So on this side, we're going to have a curly Q with a diamond in the middle when it touches. This side, let's take advantage of the fact that I now have this nice triangle. And let's put the triangle in it. Let's put the triangle in it. So, that's a little more interesting. Now, if I keep adding stuff like I have been, it's just going to be one weird looking mess. So, I will probably... Um, get rid of all my bits and pieces of scrap that I've got going on here. Separate out my red and my white, and that way everything's put away. A little tiny bit of black left. That's all I've got left of the gold. So now I have this. And since it's reduction time, I'm going to... Oops, I just sliced that. Totally cut myself this morning. Right down there. Wasn't paying attention and I my blade bent and my finger was under it. So we have to make this into a shape that we can use. So I can make it into a square, but I've done all this work to try and make it triangular. So I think I'm just going to make it triangular. And so that means that part of this has to be the point. And since I've done all this work to make this a point, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep it that way. So I'm going to push this down. I don't know what that's going to do to the funny shape that I had, but that's what's happening with it. It's going to be triangular. And as I do this, it's going to squish out the side. So you kind of have to control where it goes. very sore wrist so I'm doing this in an awkward way just because it's hard on my wrist to just push away at it so I've got one nice flat triangular shape going on and I'm going to try and create two more it's getting there it's getting flattish so now I have to start putting a point on this side. And I'd like the point to be this black stripe. That's where I want my corner to be, I think. 
So this side is going to have a black stripe on the corner, white stripe, blue stripe, white stripe, other black stripe. That's what's going to make the pattern on that side. The blue stripe is smearing because the clay is warm and because I did such a big size change or shape change. But anyways, so on this side, I have to make a flat. And I want my flat to be the curlicues. So I'm just going to keep rocking it until I get rid of the round and it settles down into a flat. And my curlicues are going to flatten out obviously a little bit. And I do have some stuff in and around them so I'm hoping they keep enough of their shape. So we're getting there. We're getting there. I have to pinch this into a corner. That gives us three fairly defined points for corners. And from there, it's all just making it a nice shape and getting it the size that we want so that we can start cutting and joining. Now I can feel that there's air in here. It's squishing down really quite well, more than it needs to, so either it's air or it's that that part of the clay is really soft. And I did discover that that tranquility color seems to be really soft. So here so far is our triangle. As I said, we're just gonna keep on, keep on keeping on one side at a time. Kind of push in the middle, push towards the outside but also push down so you're keeping your flat shape on the bottom. And every so often I give it a little, a little tuck on the end. My problem a lot of the time is when I lift it off the glass, it's so well glued to the glass that I will put dents in it with my fingers trying to lift it. Consciously trying not to do that, but usually I get going and I forget and the next thing I know I've <laughs> dented it. see for whatever reason this particular point is really soft compared to the rest Because it's so soft, I think I'm going to take a break before I reduce it some more because we're obviously we're distorting quite a lot on the ends. I have no idea what's happening in there, but I don't want all that curly cues and all that stuff to just turn to mush. So I'm going to take a break from this and let it rest and come back to it later. So I shall see you soon. Good morning. So I've had a bit of an issue, a little technical difficulty, um, because I was working away on this cane and reducing it and all that stuff. And I actually did some video um, as I was doing it. And yet somehow that portion of the video was disappeared. So when we left off, we had a big cane like this that I was reducing. And these are the ends that I cut off because in the video that seems to have gone missing, I was trying to figure out which sides to put together to make it a square. So I'm just gonna kind of go over what, what I did. And the ends that I cut off are here. Now obviously these aren't full ends, these are the distorted ends that I cut off. 
but I use that just to kind of give me an idea how things will look. So these were my options. Our little teardrop that we started out with that went around our little circle at the top um, turned out to be kind of interesting. It's not even on both sides, but it is kind of an interesting thing. So we could have put this together and gotten this pattern. Um, or we could have put this together and gotten this pattern out of our stripes, right? Or we could have put this together. Now we would have had a lot more work to make this a square, but we could have put this together, which looks kind of like butterfly wings to me almost. So these were our options. So you can see um, that the, the little bits that I did at the beginning didn't really do an awful lot, but the parts that almost make it the most interesting seem to be the things we added at the very end. This would have been one big blue triangle or diamond or whatever in the center. It would have been a little boring. And this would have been one big blob without the little bits that we decided to add in the end to break up that space. So this is why I do things like that. It seems kind of random when I do it. Um, but you know, that's that's just part of, of caning and deciding what to do once you've done it a few times and you end up with one big side that's all black. I mean, yes, that pattern might look interesting in the end, having a black side, especially if you're doing what's called like a stained glass kind of a pattern where everything is wrapped in black. There's black in between all the patterns. It can look very pretty, but it can also be kind of boring if you end up with one big expanse of one color on an edge. So anyways, I apologize for somehow losing that video, but on the upside, that means you didn't have to watch me reduce that cane. So that's gone, and I had picked out which sides I wanted put together, and what I ended up putting together was the red, because um, I liked the pattern, but I kind of liked this better, so I wanted this to be more prominent. So I left these on the outside, and I put the red stripies together, and I reduced it down. So this is the one that's reduced down now. And um, I had cut a piece off. because I wanted you to be able to see what kind of pattern it's going to make. So when we put this together, and what I'll do is now that it, I've had it in the fridge for like two days now because it was so soft in here, I'm just gonna cut it so I can give you a four piece pattern. This was an end, it's a little distorted, but you'll get the idea of what kind of thing we can make with this. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. None whatsoever. However, this is how it's going to look if I do it. So this is my long... See, this is a distorted side, so it's not very pretty. This is that long spot, that long side that we added the triangle to. And you can see that each side is different. So when you're matching, you kind of have to make sure that you match the right ones together. So this one obviously is skinnier. It turned out longer and skinnier. This one turned out fatter. So you have to make sure you're matching your fat ones to your fat ones and your skinny ones to your skinny ones. And so this is what this center pattern is going to look like. So every other pattern is going to have this, which I think turned out really cool. Now, when we first started doing this cane, it was just a weird blob and mess of different colors, right? It didn't really look like much. Um, and that's the beauty of caning when you're flying by the seat of your pants, is that sometimes it doesn't turn out great. I did one earlier this week, my very first one. I started a video. It was so bad, I actually deleted the video on purpose. Maybe I accidentally deleted this one, too. Maybe that's what happened. And this is it. This is, this is the one I did earlier this week. And, see, I looked at that and I went, oh my god, that is so boring. I, I, it's just not worth putting the video together. So I'll go through that one and show you that one in a second. Because after a couple days when it hardened up and I managed to cut a couple pieces off that were decent, I went, well, that's not as bad as I thought. 
or I'll try to stick to the one I'm doing at the moment. So every other pattern is going to look like this. And in between those, we're going to have a pattern that looks like this. Now this obviously being the um, cane end, the distorted end, isn't going to give you a very good idea, but the top side does. So every other pattern is going to be like this. Right? So we're getting this pattern that we had. We're getting this pattern that looks pretty cool. It looks like a little, almost like a little face. See the nose, the mouth, the two eyes. Almost like a little lion face to me. And in between those, we're getting this. So our weird little cane that didn't look like very much actually turned out pretty cool. It's got some interesting patterns. The color combinations maybe not so great. Having to throw that much red in just to make it interesting. It worked. It is more interesting. But it wouldn't be normal color combinations that I would do. That's just kind of what I had laying around. But it is kind of fun. You never know what you're going to get. And my spiral that I was so excited about didn't really turn out to be. Because I remember it was supposed to be a red spiral like so. Right? It didn't really turn out to be that. There is, in some of the slices that turn out nice, there is a bit of a spiral, but it doesn't show up well enough to be able to say that's what that is, is, is a, whatever you call it, a curly cue that curls a different direction on each side. But it does have the interest involved. Each spiral is a different shape, so that gives you a different interesting kind of a thing going on. So anyways, so... If you're if you're winging it and you're flying by the seat of your pants and you get halfway through and you say, oh, what am I doing? This is a mess. This is a disaster. It's not going to look very good. Keep it and finish it and see where it goes. Um, and sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised. I mean, I have had canes that are sitting downstairs that I end up not really doing anything with. And I've had other people come along and say they think they're gorgeous. So it's all it's all perspective and it's all fun. It's the, the interest that comes from making things. It's being creative. It's good for your brain. It's good for your, your mojo, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's fun. So this, this is the fella that I gave up on. And he wasn't looking very good. You know, he didn't... It's my first cane in, in freaking like a year, probably. So I was not impressed with him. But then I got him back out after he had cooled off, and I started looking. Now, he's got... I should have to cut another piece, probably. He's got um, a red stripe that I kind of threw in there for no good reason. So I have to line up my red stripe properly. I can't just do whatever. I have to have my proper sides together. This is the cane end. It might be more distorted than the rest. But, as you can see, I have a longer side with stripes and a shorter side with stripes. These are the stripes. And then I have this red stripe that goes this way. And this goes this way. Actually, I'm going to toss that. That is a cane end, and it is pretty ugly. That one's better. All right. I did have, I did have some cut so that I could look. And so this is what that center pattern turned out like. By itself, as you can see, kind of bland. The colors aren't great. It's the same colors that I've used for the other one. This is all the colors that I had handy, as you can see. So same color combinations. And then if you go the other direction, we've got this, right? So our red stripes kind of make an interesting little thing. I like this center better than I liked having that in the center. But this, all the sides are eventually going to end up in a pattern. You're always going to get centers out of every side if you make a big enough piece. If you're putting it together to make jewelry and stuff, you may only see one little section. But if you're putting like a bowl or something together, putting it on a, a candle sconce or something like that, you're always going to get, eventually, a pattern from every side. And then if you put these together, 
we get this. So all in all, again, the cane that looked kind of boring, kind of bland, didn't really like it at all, when you start laying out the finished pieces, it has potential. It's not great. It's not the prettiest cane I've ever made. But it's not bad either. So, yes, some people like to make patterns ahead of time and they can figure out how it's going to look beforehand. Um, that's the part I don't enjoy, so I don't do it. That's why I wing it. Um, I like the color combinations. And I like the surprise of finding out if you stick this together with this and then you bend it that way, what kind of pattern are you going to get? That's the part I enjoy about it. Um, and that's why I don't try to plan ahead. And sometimes, as I said, sometimes it's a little disappointing. And sometimes you find out in the end that it's kind of cool. So that's my video. I apologize again for having lost somehow or other. Um, a part of it that might have actually been boring anyway is the whole reduction and, and discussion of sides thing. Um, you can, as I've said before, you can do this part of it, decide which sides go together by getting a mirror. And if you place this on the mirror, it will reflect the other side so that you can see how it's going to look. I just use my cane ends because, I don't know, it's quick and easy. I've got them there anyways, so I find it works for me. And now I have a whole bunch of scrap that I have to figure out what to do with later. And in the meantime, I also have um, two more videos that I'm partway through. So I've got, I, I got kind of bored and I had to keep putting things in the fridge. And every time I put something in the fridge, I said, well, while that's cooling off, I'll try something new. And so there will be a video coming up on my um, beads and another video coming up. I'm, I got out my extruder. So I hope you come back and see those as well. So have a good morning. Toodles till next time.